Hi, welcome everybody. My name is David Warner. I'm the editor of Creative Loafing. And one of the five distinguished citizens sitting on the stage here will be your next mayor. Welcome to all of you. It's uh, pretty widely agreed, at least I feel, that we have a remarkably strong field of candidates for mayor. And uh, thank you all for being here and uh, sharing your uh, thoughts with us tonight. Uh, this is the first debate we ever hosted here at CL Space, which is what we call this part of our offices here at Creative Loafing. Uh, it's a revival of an event we used to call the political party. Uh, you uh, have been enjoying the party part, thanks to all of the nice people that have gathered here and are supporting various candidates. And, uh, and thanks to our hardworking CL staffers who have helped put this together. Uh, here comes the political part. I, uh, I tell you to turn off your cell phones, but that would probably be uh, crazy in this crowd. But if you are interested in tweeting, uh, you can use the hashtag Tampa Mayor, and your tweets will be displayed on that monitor up there on the right. But you don't want to watch the monitor, not with the people that are on, on the stage here. I just lost my mic here. Um, and what you do, and especially when uh, you've got somebody leading the debate tonight, as we do, that would be the longtime voice of WMNF's Evening News, and now the news and politics editor of Creative Loafing, Mr. Mitch Perry. Okay, all right. Am I on? Can you, sound, can you hear me okay? All right, great. Thanks, everybody, to coming to the Creative Loafing mayoral debate. I am Mitch Perry, the news and politics editor at Creative Loafing. Thanks for joining us. And we want to welcome the audience listening to us on WMNF's HD, The Source, Channel 3 there, and their website, WMNF.org, where we're broadcasting live right now. And the audio of this debate will be on their website and Creative Loafing's website sometime tomorrow. We, we expect that to happen. All right, before we discuss the ground rules, so let's introduce to you the four men and one woman who hope to be the next mayor of Tampa. Bob Buckhorn worked in Mayor Sandy Friedman's administration from 1987 through 1995. From 1995 through 2003, he was a Tampa City Councilman. He's been a political consultant and analyst since then. Rose Ferlita is an Ybor City native, and she's been a small business person in Tampa for over four decades working as a pharmacist. She was a Tampa City Councilwoman from 1999 through 2006, and a Hillsborough County Commissioner from 2006 to 2010. Dick Greco is also a native of Ybor City. He's been mayor of Tampa for four different terms, initially from 1967 through 1974. He ran again and won again two terms from 1995 through 2003. Thomas Scott has lived in Tampa for three decades now. He first was elected to the Hillsborough County Commission in 1996 and stayed there for 10 years. He was elected to the Tampa City Council in 2007 and currently serves as council chair. He's also the pastor of the 34th Street of God Church in East Tampa. And Ed Taranchik served on the Hillsborough County Commission from 1990 to 1998. He served on Governor Lawton Childs' high-speed rail committee in the 1990s. And in the early part of the 21st century, led a local effort to bring the 2012 Summer Olympics to Tampa. It didn't happen, unfortunately. Most recently, he was with in-town homes, trying to build affordable, energy-efficient homes here in Tampa. Okay, let's see how this is going to work. We're scheduled to go to 8 o'clock, and we probably will. We might end a little early. We'll see how it works out. The first part of this forum, for the first 45 minutes or so, I'll be asking questions of the candidates. Then we'll take questions from the audience for roughly 15 minutes or so. And then we'll give the candidates two minutes each to give their closing statements. We will have no opening statements. The candidates will have up to 90 seconds to answer my questions. We have a timekeeper here, Creative Loafing's Food and Green Editor, Katie Makel. Katie will flash her signs there, as you just saw there, to the candidates. Uh, 30 seconds, she'll give a 30 second warning and then a uh, stop warning as well. Now, all the questions will be directed to all the candidates. However, I'll be asking one individual question to an individual candidate, what I'm calling the wild card question. The candidates will have 60 seconds to answer, and any other candidates can respond for up to 30 seconds if they want to give a response, though they don't have to. All right, enough of that. Let's get started here. First question, candidates. I'd like to get your thoughts on this passage written by New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman back in December, who wrote, we are leaving an era where to be a mayor, governor, senator, or president was unbalanced to give things away to people. And we're entering an era where to be a leader will mean unbalanced to take things away from our people. It's the only way we'll get our fiscal house in order before the market brutally does it for us. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? And how will you be the person to lead us through these difficult times coming ahead? First, Bob Buckhorn. 
Mitch, I don't agree with that statement at all. I mean, I run for this office to empower people, to give people hope, to give people opportunity. Granted, the, the fiscal situation is what it is, that, that, but that doesn't mean that I don't get up every day, and I know all of us up here don't get up every day to try and make this a better place. You just have to do it in a more creative fashion. Obviously, we are not Washington, D.C. We balance budgets. We are obligated to balance budgets. Our job as mayor is to find ways to do the little things, to create an opportunity for people to be successful in the business community. We don't create jobs. We just set the table for entrepreneurs to be successful. But I think the mayor's office is the one place that you can truly shape a city. You can leave a footprint. You can leave a legacy. And I know, as the father of two little girls, I have a duty to <clears throat> leave this city in better shape than it was given to me. That's why I'm running for this job, uh, running to make this a place that they want to come home and raise their family someday, make this a place where we can be more competitive, Mitch. But yes, it will take some very, very tough decisions over the next couple of years. But you got to believe in the capacity to, to do better, to be bigger, and to reach higher. All right, thank you. Tom Scott. Yeah. I, I really believe what the right is really saying is government as we knew it four years ago before uh, is not the same today or in the future. I, I think that is accurate from the standpoint we would not have the resources or the, the finances as we once did. As one, we once did. However, that does not mean that you still cannot do uh, and provide and inspire hope and uh, give good service uh, to, to the citizen. I think that uh, you, you're going to have to be creative in doing that. There has to be collaboration in doing that. I think that there has to be partnerships in doing that. Uh, I think that the mayor will have to make some tough and bold decisions about this. Uh, also, I think it's important, though, your background has a lot to do with how you govern, how you lead, and who you are. Uh, if you look at my background, I really I come from a, a, a poor family, poor background, 11 children. So I understand the issues of, of going through tough times and hard times and stretching and, 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 and being creative. And so I think a, a lot of that has to do with your background, or who you are and what you come through in order to, to be successful as a mayor. And given the experience that I have, not only my background, but also on the county commission, on city council, three times as chairman of the, of the county commission, three times chairman as the Tampa City Council. It has prepared me to be able to make those tough decisions, be able to lead uh, the city government, and to be proactive, be out in front of people. People want to, uh, in hard time, they want a leader who understands what they're going through. They want a leader who they can touch, who they can talk to, right. and they Hi. can believe in. Thank you. Mr. Uh, I think I read Friedman a lot. I, I admire him. He, he has talked about we're entering a new climate energy area of human existence, and uh, cities and regions and states that don't understand that are going to lose big time. I, I totally agree with that. I don't view it as taking away things from people, but government has to fundamentally change. Uh, we lost $9 billion of tax value in three years. If, if all of that came back because of restrictions placed on us by the Florida legislature, the city budget would only grow by 2 or $3 million. So what we used to do, we cannot do. And we're going to change things dramatically, and it's going to be painful. And let's be honest about that. My approach, though, is to create a culture of investment to help us lift ourselves up by our bootstraps, <clears throat> by turning foreclosed houses back into homes, by making our homes more energy efficient, and very importantly, by building a mass transit system. You know, we should have a goal in our city that you, live, you can live within five blocks of a good bus system or rail system so you can do away with one car. Those three things I just talked about, renters, pay, instead of paying $1,000 a month, paying $600 for a home, people ha slicing and cutting their electric bill, and people being able to have a transit system so they don't have to own two cars, it saves people money and gets us ready, competitive, and able to deal with this very new, tough century that's coming our way. 